In my last video, one of the sample sketches I shared used a servo. A simple, cheap hobby servo like this one. And it struck me that despite being one of the most popular mechatronic components, I have never created full tutorial showing how to control it with Arduino. So today I'm here to fix this oversight. If it sounds interesting to you, stick around. In this video, I will be working with a budget servo that I picked up on AliExpress for under $2. While you can find higher quality servos, the basic principle of control remains the same for all of them. Let's take a closer look at the servo. Most hobby servos have three wires. Black, or sometimes brown, is ground. Red is for power, VCC, usually connected to 5 volts or 6 volt source. White, or sometimes yellow or orange, is the signal line, which connects to control pin of the microcontroller. Now let's look inside the servo to understand its main parts. The servo horn attaches to the output shaft, linking it to moving parts. The gear train slows down the motor and increases torque for precise control. The DC motor drives the gears and shaft. The potentiometer monitors shaft position, providing feedback. And finally, the control unit processes signals to adjust the motor's movement. Let's see how servo positioning works. For standard positional servos, position is controlled by the pulse width of the signal. A small pulse, around one millisecond, moves the servo to zero position, one extreme. A middle pulse, one and a half milliseconds, centers it at 90 degrees. A large pulse of two milliseconds moves it to 180 degrees, the opposite extreme. The pulses between these values, the servo can move smoothly from zero to 180 degrees. When I first started with Arduino, I thought I could use a servo for full 360 degrees control. I even found a 360 servo online, but when I tried it, not only did it not go from 0 to 360 degrees, it didn't support positioning at all. It turned out I bought a continuous servo, which is a different type altogether. Unlike positional servos, continuous servos control speed and direction not position. A small pulse of one millisecond makes it rotate at full speed in one direction. A middle pulse, one and a half milliseconds, stops it. A large pulse of two milliseconds rotates it at full speed in the opposite direction. Any pulse width between adjusts the speed accordingly. I initially misunderstood one key aspect of how servos operate. I knew they were controlled by pulse width modulation, PWM, but I didn't realize that you need to continuously send pulses to the servo while it's powered on. This is more obvious with continuous servos, but with positional servos it's easy to miss. For positional servos, PWM signals should be sent regularly, even if the servo is already in desired position. Without those pulses, the servo can lose its reference point and may drift out of position. Here's how the control signal works. The servo expects a high pulse of variable width, 1 to 2 milliseconds, to set its position. The total signal period is 20 milliseconds, a frequency of 50 Hz, so the servo receives a pulse roughly every 20 milliseconds. Let's look at this example where I will simulate the behavior of both type of servos. First we'll send a PWM pulse, that's one millisecond in length. After the pulse is sent, we complete the full 20 milliseconds period by subtracting the pulse width from 20 milliseconds and waiting for that remaining time. If we continue sending pulses at 20 milliseconds intervals, the positional servo will move to zero degrees and the continuous servo will start moving at full speed clockwise and won't stop until we change the signal. Now let's keep the state of both servos as they are and change the pulse width to one and a half milliseconds. We issue the pulse and wait for 20 milliseconds minus the pulse length. 
Continuous pulses at this width will move the positional servo to 90 degrees and stop the continuous servo. We'll do this one more time, keeping both servos active and increasing the pulse width to 2 milliseconds. This time, the positional servo moves to 180 degrees and the continuous servo goes to full speed in the reverse direction. With the theory covered, we are ready to dive into some Arduino coding. Spoiler alert! There is a servo library that makes controlling servos easy, but let's first try coding it ourselves to put this theory we discussed to the test. Let's take a look at the circuit we'll use to test both types of servos. I'm using an Arduino Nano, powered by an external 5 volt source, along with the two servos. You may notice that the wire colors on this budget servo are different from the standard ones shown earlier. Here brown represents ground, red is VCC and the orange wire is the signal. Since I need male header pins to connect the servo to the breadboard and then to the Arduino, I'll use DuPont jumper wires to extend the servo wires for easier connection. First I'll connect the positional servo and leave the continuous servo disconnected for now. You can see the servo is connected to VCC and ground, with the signal wire going to digital pin 9. This code controls the servo motor, moving it to different angles and holding each position for set amount of time. First we declare servo pin as digital pin 9. This is the pin connected to the servo. In setup we set this pin as an output. Next we define the function hold position, which accepts two parameters, pulse width and hold time. The pulse width determines the angle of the servo, while hold time specifies how long to hold the servo at that angle. Inside hold position a while loop sends continuous pulses to hold the servo position. For each pulse cycle we set the servo pin high to start the pulse, holding it for the specified pulse width in milliseconds. After that we set the pin low and wait for the reminder of the 20 milliseconds to complete the cycle. This pattern is repeated until the hold time has elapsed, effectively holding the servo in place at the target angle. In the loop function we call hold position with different pulse widths to move the servo to three distinct positions. First we call hold position with a pulse width of 1000 microseconds, setting the servo to 0 degrees and holding it for 2 seconds. Then we call it again with a pulse width of 1500 microseconds, moving the servo to 90 degrees and holding it for 2 seconds. Finally we set the pulse width to 2000 microseconds, moving the servo to 180 degrees and holding it for another 2 seconds. Let's load this code onto the microcontroller. And as you can see the sketch is working, but there's always a but, right? Do you notice anything off? The movement range isn't quite correct. It seems the servo is only moving from 0 to 90 degrees, not to the full 0 to 180 degrees. I did some digging and it turns out that not all hobby servos respond precisely to the standard 1 to 2 milliseconds pulse width range. Especially budget friendly ones may need slightly different pulse widths to reach their full range, like half a millisecond to two and a half milliseconds. Let's adjust the code to account for this and reload the sketch. Ha, huh, that's much better. Now we are getting a full range of motion. What's interesting is that to adapt this sketch to use with a continuous rotation servo, we only need to adjust the comments. For a continuous servo, setting a pulse width will control the direction and speed rather than an angle. Let's try this by connecting a continuous rotation servo and leaving the code as it is. We'll power up the circuit. And you can see that the servo turns for 2 seconds in one direction, stops for 2 seconds and then turns for the next 2 seconds in the opposite direction. With the continuous servo still active, let's proceed to our next experiment. This time we'll vary the pulse lengths to observe changes in speed going from full rotation to gradual slowing, a complete stop and then reversing. Here is the code. 
It begins by defining pin 9 for the servo connection and sets the initial pulse width for the full speed clockwise rotation. It also specifies an increment for gradually adjusting the pulse width. In the setup function, pin 9 is configured as an output. In the loop function, the program sends a PWM pulse to the servo pin, holding it high for a specified pulse width. The pulse length controls the speed and direction of the servo. The program then waits to complete a full 20 millisecond cycle. After each pulse, the pulse width is adjusted by the increment value, gradually changing the servo's speed and direction. If the pulse width reaches limit, two and a half milliseconds or half a millisecond, the increment reverses, making the servo change direction. This loop creates a smooth back and forth motion with an added delay to control the overall speed. Now let's upload the code and power up the circuit. The servo begins at full speed clockwise, gradually slows down to a stop, reverses, and then accelerates to full speed in the opposite direction. The process continues smoothly. Interestingly, this code will work just as well with positional servo. Let's switch to the other servo and when done, reload the code. You can see the servo smoothly transition between 0 and 180 degrees, then back again in a continuous control manner. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. We are already over 10 minutes, so I will continue this topic in my next video. In it, I'm going to show you how to control servo with external components like a potentiometer or even react to environmental inputs like temperature sensor. Thank you for watching and for all your support from likes and subscriptions to those who go extra mile by joining the channel membership and supporting me on Patreon. For members and patrons, the draft of the second video should be available shortly. So please check for updates. I'll see you guys in my next video. Ciao.